This is Radical Fit fashion-based program series that embraces craft, making, and DIY while providing a safe space for teens to discuss gender equity and to dream and create through personal expressions of style. The initiative is funded through Project Next Generation, an education technology initiative of the Illinois Secretary of State and State Librarian, Jesse White. I'm Sky Kubakub, and we're here with Radical Fit. And I'm Colectivo Multipolar, Sandro Viedo, and we're going to be talking about how to photograph uh, your models, right? Yes, yeah, like the, the kind of attitude you have towards your models or towards your photographer and how to have a good relationship and come up with really cute photos so that uh, we all feel really good and safe and comfortable rather than feeling like uh, as the model that you're being objectified or um, feel like you are just like, yeah, a piece of meat <laughs> wearing clothing. So we want to make it so that people are excited to have these kinds of relationships and collaborations and not feel so anxious about them. Yeah, because it's also it's really important like how, you know, like, the communication between the photographer and your and your model, sometimes they are strangers or they're probably friends, who knows. But um, it's good to have a, com I, well, this is how I work. Like, it's good to have a conversation before, like, what you, you know, feel comfortable with. And, like, talking about, like, also what you're going to be using those photos for. I like to have a conversation with the model first so we can, you know, talk about... Um, uh, poses, talk about the you know the clothing and everything, the accessories they're gonna be using. So it's easier also for me to direct and yeah. So and it's about having fun also. Yeah, I guess. definitely. Yeah. And it's also like uh, very much about talking about consent and things like that. Like if you're a model who wants uh, your photographer to like like for me, since I want the clothing to always look really good, I like it when Sandra fixes things. Like if if like one thing is like you know, kind of off on my clothing, I I would I really appreciate when she fixes it so it looks perfect and we don't have to like do the photos over again or she has to do like a gazillion hours in post production, editing to fix like just a waistband that's like flipped over or something like that. But like, yeah, so I like her touching me. I also like when she tells me like, oh, put your chin down or like arm up, like to get the perfect pose. Um, you might be a model who's like, I just, I just want to do my own thing. I don't want you to tell me how to do anything. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's also part of like my experience. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna take the photo and <laughs> I used to count, you know, like oh, one, yeah. two, three. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, but since you probably working with you know, professional models or uh, people that are really into that career so they probably already know you know like when to change so next pose so you probably don't have to direct them that that much when you see like something that like i don't know like pose sky i don't know like if you see right here like oh let me just probably fix it right here may i i always ask yeah we just get probably is more like we feel more comfortable but yeah so we it's always cool to ask it's always cute to ask yeah and yeah so I don't know. You understand? Well, if if you're a new photographer or a new model, then you you might not be working with 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 professional models, of course. So it might just be your friends, and you might be going on this journey, this new journey together, um, like coming up with your portfolios together. Like you can help each other. Like the mm -hmm. the photographers will get photos, and the models will get photos out of it. But like, yeah, figuring out uh, who has ownership of the photos, like. For me, I pay for my photos or I trade for them, but then anybody can use them. I don't, I don't care about that, but like it depends. I think that. it's, yeah, it's always good to have, um, no contract, an agreement. Yeah. Uh, it know. could be a, a, a contract if you aren't like, yeah. yeah, me and Sandra are really close. So mm -hmm. we like, yeah, no, <laughs> it's important to have an agreement, right? So you can use those photos in the future you know on your website and maybe for an exhibition right like people they can ask you like they probably like your photos and they ask you so you don't have to go back like five years you know from your work like oh i need to contact this model like what about they move what about they you know have their contact anymore so <laughs> you know having that agreement uh writing agreement um that you can easily find online it's really easy 
um, you know, they give you consent to use that image for, you know, for business or for your um, personal um, portfolio. So yeah, so that's good to have. And also in my experience, like I didn't, I didn't start like taking photos of, you know, like um, fashion designers or garment designers. It was more like in, in the club. <laughs> I was taking photos in, in the queer uh, nightlife and it's kind of a challenging it's different when you have like a, a studio lighting rather than party lights you know like <laughs> lasers and <laughs> fog i'm no fan of fog because <laughs> yeah fog could, is the worst <laughs> i mean yeah it could be difficult to take photos and you know with the fog but it's also you know it's another challenge but yeah so it's different and uh this is how i start also kind of my communication with the models like because it's dark right so i'm like okay just try to pose or like movement because I also like taking photos in, in movement because I like to um, record that trace of light you know so yeah and then it's when I met Sky and and it's that we start collaborating uh, yeah and now you can watch the videos they're being uploading on the U Media YouTube channel and also if you want to do your own garments and I also have a tutorial DIY tutorial and for photo for the photo studio in your living room your room <laughs> anywhere and yeah so we're gonna have some fun right now right yeah yeah okay when you're posting things online or anywhere always crediting the photographer the model the designer everybody who's involved make sure to do it unless unless like a model doesn't want to be credited for like safety reasons or like maybe they have a specific like modeling name I mean that's for anybody like use whatever name is safe for them because like if they're a new model and um, maybe they're trans and not out to the parents yet and they don't want you to like dead name them but that you they also don't want you to you know out them so you might not credit them in cases like that but um but definitely you usually are crediting everybody also um at this i learned i learned when i started working with this guy uh image description super important yeah so doing image descriptions and or audio descriptions depending on what it is so that blind and low vision folks can understand what's going on in the photos so like for me it's really easy for me to do uh, image descriptions. I already kind of was doing them uh, before I even officially knew about them just because people would see like a photo of me with all this different stuff and they'd be like what is even going on? Why are you wearing yeah, this guy? What is happening? So I'd be like oh this is like a crop top and a skirt and a collar and things like that and then I would like talk a little bit about how it looked and um, the you know of course the designers and things like that so um, yeah but it just is really great and we're going to have a later video uh, with Andy Slater where I'll be talking with him about how to do audio descriptions for our fashion shows so stay tuned to check that out at a later date yeah another important thing to think about is how you're gonna charge for your labor for your work for your knowledge right because Trust me, it's been, um, when I was young, you know, when I was young, I was always like, ah, you know, can you come and take photos of this? And then I'm like, sure, right? I have my camera and I'm practicing and everything. But, you know, get to the point that you invest in, or at least, yeah. I don't know, I mean, like in the equipment. Yeah. You invest in your equipment, you invest in, in yourself, in your knowledge, right? And, I mean, you're paying for, I don't know, like probably an uh, online course, right? Like software and other things, like transportation, everything, yeah. food, <laughs> like everything that is, you know, related to a photo shoot. You should know how to charge. Like, for example, what I'm working with, with this guy, you know, we talk about that and it's like, okay, we can, you know, collaborate or we can exchange this and that, right? So, but this is a, that's an agreement that you get with the, with the person that you collaborate. But when you're working for, you know, like... Um, um, I don't know, for a bigger events or... Uh, Especially like weddings or quinceas. Or yes, quinceañeras, like, when like, of course, you have to charge, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, because you're going to make, a, you want to make a living out of, you know, what you're doing. For sure. And I think, I think, I don't know, it's my experience, uh, things are changing and people are like, when they approach you, like, they're really like, okay, I have this budget. Mm -hmm. Are you, you know, like, do you want to do it? You need to think about everything that you invest in and... This is also um, probably in the future, or, or I don't know, um, like your business insurance, <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. yeah, like or yeah, because 
you know, like, I don't know how much is, you know, your phone, because if you're taking photos with your phone, like, they're already, like, thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you, I mean, keep all the receipts, keep them for your taxes, you can write them off for yeah. your taxes, like, that's so, I write off so much stuff, I mean, I write off everything, everything for photo shoots, too, even though I'm a fashion designer, but photo shoots are part of my advertising, so. And, yeah, and, and it's really important that you know that an artist needs to charge for the for the work okay and artists also it's um involved with you know taxes <laughs> it's involved with uh, insurances you know like um it's it's a lot you know because it's 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 your business and yeah because sometimes we can think about like oh i'm an artist and you know like i don't sell my my yeah. work my vision my it's not pure if it's yeah, like, like but no no like forget about that you know you're an artist <laughs> and your labor needs to be um, appreciate and the way they you know it could be is through money right yeah so yeah it could charge be, <laughs> it can be money it can be but yeah it, it, it totally depends like yeah if it's with your friends like I love making clothing for my friends a lot uh, I love making clothing for my friends more than I love making clothing for clients <laughs> so I'd rather make like you know a whole wardrobe or something or like you know I made a rule a long time ago that I wouldn't make stuff for theater because small theaters in Chicago were so bad at paying me. But there's a couple people that I will make exceptions for because I know that they either pay me or respect me so well or I like super believe in their and what they're making that I'm like, okay, cool. I like, I am totally down, but you have to find a balance. Like for me, I have a balance between things that I donate to like you know making masks for black lives matter protests or for brave space alliance or things like that um houseless folks uh but then like you know for rich people especially in the neighborhood i live in i'm gonna charge them charge them 35 dollars for a mask because they have million to three million dollar houses so definitely like you can make things sliding scale you don't always have to charge a lot but like if you know a place has money like a university feel free to charge them double, triple, the right amount, right? What, whatever <laughs> amount, yeah, like whatever you think they can handle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. nothing wrong with that. <laughs> totally. Yeah, and you know, the advantage of having your own business is that you take the decisions. So that's that's really good. And you price your own work. You know, like someone says, like, you know, it's too expensive. Well, this is... This is what it this is. is what it yeah. Is. <laughs> and like, and yeah, learning how to say no early on. Yes. Don't and overwhelm, are you, right? <laughs> oh my god. I mean, we both have that problem. Like, you know, it's, it's hard to Sometimes. say no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I used to have... I, I used to have a really hard time saying no to anything. I would say yes to everything. And then I got really good at saying no to things that I didn't really feel like went along with my aesthetic or my beliefs, like, you know, things like that. But then all of a sudden my clothing line got very popular and then all the people wanted the things that went along with my beliefs and stuff, but it was just too much for me to handle. But I was like, oh, <laughs> I guess I have to also start saying no for things that I would really love to do, but like, you need to be able to balance, uh, yeah, your health and your work and your personal life. I have no personal life. I just have work and then trying to balance my health. But that's hard enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But life is a journey. <laughs> since, since most of you are teens, try to put that in place early on because it's a lot harder to unlearn it later. Yeah. So let's do this and yeah, let's have fun. Cool. <laughs> okay. So we here, you know, setting up our lights. You can have different kind of lights, LED, so they don't get that hot for your model, right? Because then they can get hot too. Okay, so this guy here is modeling some of their garments. We're gonna start taking photos. We're gonna take photos with our fonts today. Here. Yes. So we're going to be taking photos. So we're going to be using a um, cell phone. At U Media, if you're in Chicago, you could go and borrow cameras. And you can also, at like Harold Washington, at least they have backdrops, things like that. So you can go to the library. So you have your model, right? Your model already know what they're doing, have their outfit. 
her different outfits. How many outfits are we gonna use today? Just two. Just two, okay? Yeah, but sometimes we do so many and it takes a lot longer than you ever estimate it to be. Never say this photo shoot is gonna be one hour. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but, but yeah, okay, so but, but also, um, yeah, like depending where you're doing it, if you're renting a uh, space, you probably be, have to be, you know, like really on a timeline. Um, but then have your models come already with their makeup on or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so this is what I'm gonna do. Like, this guy is already, um, they, 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 yeah, they, 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 they make up. Um, they were in charge of the aesthetics, everything. So I'm just here with, you know, equipment. And um, we're gonna do this. So, okay, this guy. So let me see. Hold on. When I'm modeling, I try to come up with like sort of a character or a personality that goes with the outfit. So, um, I mean, if I'm modeling and just trying to be myself, some I'll do like lots of squats and snarls and things like that. But like recently we did a photo shoot where I was modeling a bunch of different garments that were for my models in Hong Kong. We were just trying to take photos just in case everything got lost in the mail on the way to Hong Kong. So each one wasn't exactly an outfit that I would necessarily make for myself. So I kind of came up with different characters in my head that went along with each of the outfits. So I had one where I was like, oh, I'm like sporty. Like I'm gonna be sporty. And then I had ones that were like more masks. So I was like trying to come up with more like mask poses and things like that and then there are some that were like very elegant so i just pretend that i have long gloves on and i'm like i'm so elegant and then there's like one that somebody the was goddess like, one. yeah yeah i wanted to look like a goddess so i was like okay i'm gonna think about aphrodite the goddess of love <laughs> i always interview each of my models to come up with their dream outfit uh that's my process i ask them each what would make clothing most accessible to their body, what would make clothing show off their gender expression best, what parts of their body they want to highlight, what parts they might feel vulnerable about, and then also what parts they feel vulnerable about but want to highlight in this context. So that's how I come up with my outfits and how I make sure that my models feel really cared for and like, and it's totally a collaboration between me and them to come up with their outfit and that's what gives me my inspiration. For me, I always make sure that my photo shoot area is accessible. Right now, this is not so accessible because we would want to roll this all the way out and tape it down. Uh, somebody could come from the accessible bathroom down the lift. Uh, right now we have stuff in front of it, but that's just because we're in the middle. Um, but then they could roll onto the backdrop and then move around and then we would usually have this yeah more rolled out to make more room for wheelchairs um and yeah just making sure there's accessible bathroom or green room type of area to get ready and use the bathroom in uh and then also the the space and if if you're doing a photo shoot before like a show like i usually do then also the stage uh as well as the audience because a lot of people just think about disabled folks as passive consumers rather than as active participants or models or performers. So when asking if a space is accessible, lots of times, even if you ask that, the venue managers might just be thinking about it in the eyes of if a disabled person is an audience member and not if they are actually participating um, or performing. So. Yeah, I always make sure of all of that be way beforehand. You want to get the whole outfit, right? So if, as you say, like, do it again, Sky. Like Sky is doing this, uh, this, this pose. So you can see, you know, uh, they're highlighting the, the glasses, glasses, makeup, right? A choker from Ch River Queer, uh, a bracelet from Emma Alamo, and then some rebirth garments, crop top and little skirt and then I have little boxer briefs by aqua underwear everything can be visible right so like because they yes they are uh, promoting uh, <laughs> their work so let's do it. So let's, yeah. let's do it I like to promote my work as well as my friends work or other businesses that I like 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 Tawapa and 
is my earrings and things like that. So. This is one of the my favorite uh, poses. Like let's say when if I say sky like frame frame your yeah frame your face frame your face like I really like doing this. Can you your hand leave it back yeah so we can avoid a little shadows. Yes. So you have like oh can I touch you right so okay. So right there. So you see that you don't you don't have shadows, and the face. Sometimes with with cell phone cameras like this kind of position, it gives you like fish eye, and I really like that aesthetic. It's like kind of like really nineties, right? Yeah. <laughs> and this is you know all the colorful. So let's say like um, what about like if I want to highlight the the skirt? Let's a little bit, you know, and then so you can see what is on the bottom, right? So as you see here, you fine. Like yes, oh, yeah. you know, like all those, you know, small details. They're very important. Very other, important, yeah. Otherwise, like I'll, you know, I think Sandra had to get used to working fashion photographer like brain because it is different. It's like, like you know, um, I loved Sandra's stuff because she was so good at doing stuff in low lighting and club settings, per things that are moving, performances, but also portraits and like studio photography like the most versatile I don't even know how Sa Sandra does it <laughs> but like but like thinking about specifically the fashion rather than just like the overall feel I think like just like really zooming in on the the clothing parts <laughs> yeah, is <right>. important <laughs>
We would love to see the projects you are working on, so use the hashtags CPL Radical Fit, U Media, and U Media Chicago, and tag us on Instagram and Twitter at U Media Chicago. Or find us on our Facebook, U Media at Chicago Public Library.